Hello and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 24th of March, 2019. Loads and loads of things going on, folks. So much. It's just unbelievable. We had to kind of pick and choose the things that are going on because there's just so much going on. But the two things that we do want to give a mention, first and foremost, is uh, I'm sure you heard, and we've mentioned this on the show before, Brian McCarthy has now been released from prison after being in there for 58 days for not committing a crime. He was released uh, during a week. And also, we want to give a mention to Ben Gilroy. Ben Gilroy is still in, and he's going to be going to court to see if he can um, so, you know, get released a bit earlier than... I think he has another four weeks uh, to go. And uh, just a reminder was sent in to us. We're going to give a mention anyway. But Ben Gilroy's dwelling is in Trim Court tomorrow, which means that... Ben is up in court regarding his uh, the eviction and repossession of his house. Ben's in obviously jail at the moment for again not committing a crime, and basically his wife has to defend uh, his family home. That's Sarah Jane uh, on her own. Uh, so just to let the listeners know that um, basically if you want to or if you're in the local area in Navan and you can get down on Monday to show support regarding the uh, repossession and the possible just to stop the sheriff if the sheriff's going to try and come out because he has uh, three kids and one of his little girl Isabel Isabella had uh, leukemia there uh, not so long ago and it'd be really uh, great if you can make it and support uh, Ben uh, and just uh, he's uh, in Navan I'm sure we can sort out details later if you want to email us um, or it even forward you on the details to uh, Sarah Jane um, but yeah it, that just just to give out um, a message for that right okay uh, the guest on the show tonight is a lady called Tracy Mahan and Tracy is a channel and a medium and she will also uh, be talking to us about light language and we hope also to uh, channel uh, Tracy said that she will channel live on the show with us tonight so we can ask questions to the uh, spiritual entity or the spiritual body that's coming through as a channel through Tracy so we'll see how we got on with that later so before we get on and talk about the bits and pieces that we have to talk about let's find out what the communication channels are okay folks communication channels the communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046-927-1212 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room Thanks very much, Mary. Yes, the OYM chat room can be found on the website, which is oymradio.com. If you log on to that uh, email or the, that web address, you will see the website there. You will see all the lovely links. You'll see the link to our YouTube channel, to the email address, which, as Mary did say, is info at oymradio.com. And if you want to just fire us off an email during the week, uh, just to let us know if you heard the show, what you thought of the show, if you have any suggestions for future guests, that's uh, very much appreciated. Or even if you just want to say hi and let us know where you're listening from, we do appreciate those kind of emails. Also, you will see the links there as well for the Skype, uh, the anti-social media, Facebook, Twitter and also MeWe. You will see a plethora of links to previous podcasts that we have done on lots of great shows and great information uh, going back to 2015, so four years worth of podcasts for your listening pleasure. You will also see a link to Patreon. Yes, we are on Patreon as well. If you want to support us, uh, please do click on that link and join with us on the Patreon journey. And uh, you'll get some, uh, some great information on that site as well, some personal blogs from both Alan and I. We also, as mentioned, we do have the chat room there. If you have a username and password, you can log on, log in, and join the festivities in the chat room. Some lovely people already logged in there, and that is the place, well, that is one of the places to ask your questions. If you're on People's Internet Radio, you can log into the chat room there and pop your questions in the chat box also. And a big hi to everyone logged in there also. If you're feeling brave, you can uh, make that call. Pick up the phone, 046-927-1212. Or if you want to call in from outside the Republic of Ireland, it's 00353-469-271212. And all those uh, phone numbers and uh, information can be found on the website. Brilliant. Okay, you're going to kick us off, Steve. 
Yes, I am. Uh, we have some news here from the IrishTimes.com, and it says Garda monitoring websites and online activities activists for hate speech. Uh, additional guard that patrols outside mosques to reassure members of the community. Uh, Gardy responsible for monitoring several websites and online personalities with history of spreading racism and inciting hatred among Irish web users have noted a recent increase in activity. Many of the websites are based in the United States, making combating them difficult due to strong freedom of speech protections in, the, in that country, said Inspector David McInerney of the Garda Racial, Intercultural and Diversity Office, the GRIDO. Uh, others frequently change their names and IP addresses, making monitoring much more difficult. Uh, there are certain groups, it says, out there who like to store up racial hatred, and we have to be watching the, uh, that at all times, he said. Uh, these are certain individuals who come up time and time again. We know people uh, who are at this all the time. They move on, they change the name of the site, and then they start again. They're inciting hatred, just trying to get people's backs up all the time, Inspector McInerney said, following a spate of online racial abuse directed at the black Irish community in response to reports of antisocial behaviour by groups of black youths in West County Dublin and in Mead. The, uh, on Friday, I had one of these bait issues on Facebook, and the problem was is that uh, I expressed my opinion, and apparently, uh, because I expressed my opinion, um, I was called a Gem Authority supporter, and then a Ben Gilroy loon, and then I was labelled a far-right far extremist. <laughs> far you? A far-right extremist. Jesus. I said, I don't even know what that is. Um... So, uh, and I said, well, there's a few things that Gemma says that I agree with, and a few things she says I don't agree with. A few things Ben says I agree with, and a few things I don't agree with. Um, if that makes me a far-right, you know, loon, or whatever they want to call it. Now, if if I'm supposed to be a far-right extremist, and they they disagree with, with, with me, and they agree the opposite to me, then that must make them far-right leftists, rather than... Yeah, extreme far right left, okay. rather than extreme. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, all this kind of labelling is just ridiculous. But the problem is, is that I respect anybody's uh, uh, opinion, uh, uh, freedom of speech. I mean, regardless whether it's against what I say, I think they have a right to have their expression. And their you opinion. said it before, you said you will defend their right, yeah. even if they, even if they, what they think is different to what you think. Exactly. But the problem is, is that from the extreme left. If you don't agree with them, they'll attack you. They're not letting you have free speech. They don't agree with you having free speech. You have to agree with them or else they go on the attack. So where is the compromise in there? You see, this is what's going on. So basically, um, the group that I was in, um, well, I think I said it. Did I say it last week? Maybe I said it last week. I just said to them that, uh, uh, yeah, I love them too and then left the group because if that's the kind of people that's in the group, you don't want to be in the group. Um, that kind of person, yeah, not good, not good. So anyway, I left the group anyway because I'm not playing them games, you know. I'm just not into playing them, them games anymore. Anyway, uh, second on the list is uh, Boston25news.com. Researchers working on vaccine that could prevent common cold. There you go. A cure for one of the leading causes of the common cold and other respiratory diseases may not be far in the future. Researchers at the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh are working on a vaccine for human metanumovirus <laughs> or MTV. Oh, I'm so glad the, you got that word. The, the, <laughs> the virus can cause respiratory infections in children and affects everyone by age five. If one of your kids gets a cold around February or March, then they bring it home to you. Dr. John Williams said that could likely be MPV. Where Williams is developing the vaccine, he's been studying MPV since it was discovered in 2001, but said that it's been around for hundreds of years and can be deadly. Of course it can't. It can be deadly and you need to take a vaccine so it won't be deadly. Although most people who get MPV are just going to have a cold, Williams said, plenty of people, kids and adults, are going to be hospitalised every year and some of them are going to die. Scaremongering, get the vaccine. Now, Apparently, now, if I'm wrong with this, I am fair enough, but my understanding with the cold is that 50% of the cold flu is the rhinovirus, and then 50, the other 50% is a makeup of different versions of that rhinovirus for the cold. Um, 
and uh, we've had a cold for years and all of a sudden they want to bring a vaccine money vaccine money vaccine money uh, injections into your system yeah right okay i think i'll i'll just go with the cold thanks very much and i'll just dose myself up um, so just to uh, let you know about that, watch out for that one. You are just so far left or extreme right, wherever. I'm, extre- I'm, I'm <laughs> so extreme right and falling off the chair. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, independent.ie says, ex Garda lifts lid on decades of child abuse in Gale A uh, new book says, clergy ignore the sex crimes and a, gar- a retired Gardaí uh, has, can- has called for an independent inquiry into four decades of child sexual abuse in a remote corner of the Gale uh, from the 1960s to the 1990s, dozens of children were being abused by four paedophiles, it says, in the area, which stretched from Garter Hawk on the North Donegal coast south to Letter Macaward and Glen Tees and West Anagree. Are you well, uh, well, seriously? Well done. <laughs> uh, and Kim Kessler. <laughs> in a shocking new book, Breaking the Silence, former guard Martin Ridge, who investigated the horrific case of priest Eugene Green and teacher Dennis McGinley has accused the Catholic Church of turning a blind eye on decades of devastation. An inquiry uh, would show that members of the clergy had to know what was going on. We know they were made aware of it, he said. He added that the hurt in the communities was being compounded by the release of pending, uh, the release and pending release of the perpetrators. Green, who violently abused altar boys in different parishes for 17 years, was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment in 2000 and is due for release this December. Mm. There you go. So that book's going to come out and expose. But we, we've known this. By the way, they're, they're not locations. They're just words I got from Scrabble, just to see if you can mention <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, well they, should be, they should be places. They sound like nice places <laughs> yeah. to live. How's your week? Yeah, my week's not, not too much to report, actually. I just have a little piece of paper in my pocket and uh, just two items on it. And, and that's it. One is, you, you'll know it when you see it, but I just thought it was worth a mention. Right, you, okay. might, you might disagree. Do you want a drum roll? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want a drum roll. Um, I, people, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have been talking about Reel.video as an alternative platform because a lot, I know a lot of people, um, like their last week, uh, Vinnie Eastwood, he was doing an expose. He wasn't doing an expose. He was analysing uh, video footage of the New Zealand shooting. And while he was doing it online, he got a warning from YouTube and his, his, his stream was eventually pulled. Uh, so no free speech for Vinny. Uh, but I was saying that anyone who was interested in a, another platform, uh, an alternative, so to speak, to YouTube, could try Real Dot Video, which is owned by Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Now during the week, Real Dot Video disappeared, and all I was getting was a holding page. Um, so I contacted Mike, and it does seem that Real Dot Video has been reinvented as Brighton. B R I G H T E O N dot com. So Brighton dot com, and uh, so it's still it, it is still there. Uh, I don't know why he hasn't just kind of put a redirect to the new site, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So it does still exist. It's Brighton dot com now at the moment. Uh, there is a great short video in relation to five G as well. That's on that because five G is it's the buzzword now at the moment. Everyone's talking about five G. Um, well, when I say everyone's talking about it, most people are wondering, where to get, why is all the trees getting cut down? And then you're going to go, to make way for 5G. And then it kind of starts a conversation, which is a good thing. So I do have a short video, and I'm going to stick that up on the chat rooms as well. The only other thing that I want to mention is something that Alan spoke to me about during the week. And I just thought, this is so funny. It, I, don't, I don't know if it's genuine. We'll use the posh word. The posh word? Yeah. Oh, posh no, posh. oh, sorry, okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> Dublin 4. Right, we're getting very posh. Right, it says, flatch it. I can't use the F word, well, the short F word, so we're using the long F word. Far, fr- fr- flat, flatulent rape. How crazy are the feminists? I, like I say, I don't know if this is a joke or if it's genuine, but it says, by. F- I'll just have to read it the way it is, I'm sorry. By farting louder. The man is using passive-aggressive violence to position himself as dominant. This intimidates the woman to subconsciously not release as much flatulence, and thus the woman fearing for her safety doesn't fart as loud uh, as a sign of submissiveness. This, in turn, contributes to rape culture and the women being oppressed. And this is allegedly from an Ashley Ingle, who's a feminist. feminist. Now, I don't know if that's genuine. If it is, it's concerning. 
Uh, if it's a joke, well, okay, it's mild, it's mildly funny. But uh, yeah, Alan was telling me about this during the week, and he sent me a, a link to it, and I just thought, you know, I, I'd give it a mention just to see what people uh, what people think, you know, what people think about it, because uh, I know some women who. You know, let's just say they can flatulate louder than they, the they, they can compete with the men. That's where that way. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I looked at the date when I read that just to make sure it wasn't April first. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that's yeah, worrying. That's uh, that's my week there. How's your week? Not too bad. Before we bring uh, Tracy in, just a couple of things uh, as usual. Um, right now, this one of these uh, attacks on uh, Facebook. You know, again, uh, the extreme far left who don't allow you to have your express your opinion. Um, she said here, we were talking about the whole uh, vaccine uh, damage, and myself and Steve actually spoke to a lady there um, not too long ago, two weeks ago, Steve, where she actually had her child, uh, a, a, a great, her child was completely confessmentous, and it was a, he or she, I'm not too sure, was it a little girl? Or what I believe it was, it was a little girl. Yeah. A little girl, and they were perfect, no problem at all. Then she brought the child in and got the MMR and bang, that was it. Everything changed from there. And now she's uh, autistic. Very uncanny for that to happen, isn't it? Right, okay. Well, this lady apparently put up on Facebook because we were kind of debating this thing. Um, I closed it down straight away when I, I knew exactly where her mind was. Um, she said that given the measles outbreaks, the mumps outbreaks, and the fact that there are children and adults who can't get vaccinated as they are compromised, I feel it should be mandatory. She agrees with mandatory vaccine. Genuine vaccine injury is rare. Is rare, apparently. It's, it's rare. The benefits outweigh any risk. And then she says, where are all these injured children? So, Steve, your little girl, Holly, who's very bright, very sharp, and in health-wise, she's in great health. Um, now, according to this lady, uh, the benefits outweigh any risk. So what you have to do now is bring Holly, you play Russian roulette with mm. your little girl, yeah. and go to the, the, uh, the doctor and get the MMR. And uh, sure, you know, the, 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 the benefits outweigh the risk. You know, so take a chance. Oh, no. No. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. You you know you know Holly, yeah. and you know she's she's six years of age. She has, like everyone else. She's got the co- the common cold, yeah. and she's had a, a tonsillitis. There's a vaccine for that. Oh, there, no. <laughs> <laughs> there is now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she's never been sick. Really, I mean, when you say sick, I mean. She's never been sick a day in her life. She's had the the snots and the sneezes, same as everyone else. Uh, she's been around children who have had uh, chickenpox and measles. Mm. And she hasn't contracted them. Mm. So does that mean there's something wrong with her? Or does it mean her immune system is fairly, you know, well, fairly strong? Well, you'd like to think that God got it right when, you know, when they did, uh, you know, organising the bodies, you know? Absolutely. When we were born, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there you go. So Russian roulette with your own child. Well, I'll tell you what you do, uh, this lady who wrote this message. Uh, the best thing to do is when you have kids or with your kids, you do Russian roulette and you stick your kids in for MMR and see how you get on. Because that's what you're doing. It's Russian roulette. Um, and then she said, where are all these injured children? You know, They're everywhere. They, well, but seriously? They, but they, yeah, but they, they, this, is, this is ignorance. You know, This is real, really. This, this is what you're dealing with. This is what the extreme far left is. You know, They don't do the research. They don't do the facts. They're not open-minded. They don't challenge their belief systems. And they just go out, and you want to stop everybody else. You know, if, if they're, they're nutcases. They really are nutcases. Um, they should be locked up. Um, okay, so, anyway, let's get positive, and let's get focused, and let's get all spiritual. And we're going to bring Tracy in. I'm going to talk to Tracy um, about all things positive. But before we do that, Steve's going to read out her bio. Okay, Tracy Mahan is a channel, a psychic, medium, highly tuned empath, clairvoyant, hypnotherapist, QHHT practitioner, family coach, NLP practitioner, and Reiki master. For the past two and a half decades, she has dedicated herself to her personal path of spiritual and, psych- spiritual and psychic development. Tracy comes from a highly sensitive and intuitive family and has fortified her natural gifts with training and practice, enabling her to connect with guides, angels, ascended masters, spiritual councils and beyond. In addition to, in addition to being a clear channel of messages from these realms her expertise also includes offering clients perspective 
through looking at past lives to identify important connections with their present incarnation. Fantastic. Good evening, Tracy. How are you doing? I am wonderful. You guys are delightful to listen to. I'm over here containing laughter because I don't know if that's coming through or not. So no, I'm going to let it out now. <laughs> I'm just going to start laughing. No, you're fine. The, 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 the Skype was down. The check's in the post. That's great. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thanks a lot so for fun. coming on. Um, thank you. And basically, we want to get more on the positive side. There's so much going on at the moment. And just before mm-hmm. we went live, by the way, our, our listeners, we have to say to our listeners, before we went live, Steve was telling us about, do you want to talk about, because Mercury's in retrograde, apparently, and that's not a good that's not a good house to be in apparently. So that means that, <laughs> means that everything's in everything is in ter- turmoil. When Mercury's in retro- retrograde, everything's in turmoil. Things don't work. People argue with each other, and the cats fight with each other, the dogs fight with each other, and everything goes on. And we have four more days of this retrograde, and apparently, you know, we're kind of swimming in quicksand at the moment. Four more days of it, and then we're over. Uh, do you want to quickly say, you know? Yeah, I'll just, uh, yeah, because yeah, we mentioned the I stuff. I think we stuff need there. to turn this around, guys. You know, it's not turmoil. Where retrograde can also be about bringing things to completion. Something that needs to end might finally be ending. You might be just cleaning out that slate for all the new and wonderful things to come in. How about we look at that part? That's well, good, too. That's a good way to do it. Steve was talking about giving in his keys and walking out with his job. <laughs> I, I, I was. I was just saying to Alan earlier on, I, it just got to the stage during the week that I wanted to walk up to the boss, hand the keys and say, <laughs> I'm going off. I'm going to be out sick with stress. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. But I did say, and Tracy, you heard this as well, and I just want to say say to the listeners just kind of you know put it out there if anyone else maybe noticed anything on Friday yeah. uh, we, were, day. we were in, in work on Friday and myself and another chap called Dave we work in the warehouse and there are a couple of well there's about four four or five women that work in the office uh, depending on what day it is uh, there's five of them in the office but you know four, four of them usually do a bit of work one does something else anyway. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah um yeah, so we did notice on Friday that there was an air, an air that you could cut with a knife. There was just something emanating from the office. And each time anyone came out, some of the, some of the girls there smoke. And when they come out for the smoke, uh, we'd have a little chat with them. You know, just you know, pleasant, exchange pleasantries and have a bit of, you know, workplace crack, I suppose. Um, and we noticed that there was just something amiss on, on Friday. And I remember that even Dave said to me, he said, geez, they're all in some fell, fell form up there. And they were. They were all bickering and fighting amongst each other. And I remember at one point, uh, late afternoon, thinking, jeez, I remember Alan saying there was something about a date this month where something was going to be, you know, uh, so, happening, the, the old solar solar uh, flare. Solar flare, yeah. And I, I remember yeah. thinking, Alan said the 21st. What date's today? The 21st. So I don't know if it's connected, but yeah, if anyone else who's listening you knows noticed that either someone around you was in Fell Farm on Friday, uh, or if you're in fell form yourself, just uh, maybe let us know in the chat room. So tell us, Tracy, what do you think <laughs> of this solar flare and the energies? I mean, what are you uh, picking up from your end? I'm right there with all the ladies in your group. We're, you know, we already, let's just get personal, we already cycle with that moon, you know, and, and our moods just swing with that that moon and wherever it's sitting. And um, those solar flares, I, I was telling you guys earlier when, when that was coming in, not only did we have that, but we did have the full moon going on at the same time. We got Mercury in retrograde. It's like, let's just put a bunch of wild cats in a box and stick them over where Steve and Alan work. <laughs> and um, yeah. so, yeah, I, I, it can really affect us. If, and here's the good news, though. You know, you guys had this awareness. You had this information. And... You're recognizing, hey, look at this. These guys are all kind of going a little crazy. And you kind of took a step back and you were like, what's going on astrologically? And you had it figured out, which to me, when you can do that, when you can say, oh, you know what? We got all these things going on. I bet that's making them a little crazy. Then it's a little easier to deal with it. If you don't know what's going on and you feel like people are attacking you or cutting you off on the road or, you know, just getting a little bit edgy, it's it's a little harder to take. It feels more personal. But when you got the education, you got that um, you got that information. You can look at that and go, let's just let them play that out, and I'll stand over here, and you know, then tomorrow's a better day. But um, it can it can really affect us emotionally, and if we're paying attention to what's going on, then we can get ahead of that. 
But if you're just kind of going with the flow of it, sure, you can get knocked sideways with some of the stuff that's coming in these days. And, you know, the universe is designing it to help us clear out those etherical closets. And so our stuff's going to come up when these energies come in. And if we're not, you know, if we don't have any background in how to look at it and clear it out of that etherical closet, then it's going to come out in weird ways and people are going to want to stand back and give you some room. Mm -hmm. I think so. One of the things, well, two things that we've mentioned in the show before is number one, people have to start clearing their shadow side. And number Mm -hmm. two, people need to be in balance between 45 and 55 because, um, you know, people get very flighty sometimes. They go from one side of the pendulum to the other and um, they get the highs of euphoria and then you get kind of depressed and down and what we're saying is you have to become an observer and you have to go between 45 and 55 and stay in there and just become an observer and as you said just there once you know what's going on and the, the energies are hitting the planet and it's having major effect on a lot of people you need to be mm-hmm. an observer you need to pull yourself out and not get involved but just watch and see what's going on um, and obviously deal with your shadow side because you know before we can you know uh, increase our energy or our frequencies um, and if we want to if we are heading down the 5D route we're going to need to deal with the shadow side we need to cut them ties and um, just kind of move on and uh, you know and deal with that yeah I agree Um, there's and there's so many different ways that people are going to be dealing with this it's just allow everybody their process and um, you know give yourself your process it's it's not going to be the same for any two people it's like a fingerprint mm. so so where do you happen where do you think we are regarding i mean i'm sure you've come across it and you when, you when you do your channeling you come across information and they say to you look you know we are on a kind of a growth path where we are moving from i mean are we moving from 3d to 5d the likes of people like dolores cannon has talked about this. She's done the QHHT. We've had people on the show talking about it. Now, dates come and go, and yes, you know, energies do affect the planet and can affect us. Um, that kind of makes sense. You know, the whole idea of lunar, lunatic being the moon and everything else. So it, it does kind of affect us in a kind of in in a strange kind of way. Um, some people will not realise, as you said, and some people be aware of it. But from your perspective. What are you seeing? What are you being told about this ascension or this change of frequency or, you know, what's happening? What do you think is happening there? Oh, that's such a good question. And I am going to preface that a little bit with um, just saying these these will come from my belief systems or, or the information that, that I'm out in the world collecting on myself. And then when I bring the channels in, they they do need to use my references. So I do want to tell people if it's not resonating with you, don't worry about that. It doesn't mean you have to throw a mean comment on something because it's Mm. not resonating. Just go find somebody that resonates. That's my thing. (laughs) But um, That's fair enough. That's fair comment. They are using... Um, they are using my reference points and they are taking me down a path of enlightenment and helping me to learn and evolve as well. So I am also on this roller coaster with you guys and um, I do see, I, I'm seeing, I've been, on, I've been on this ascension path for quite a while and been following Dolores Cannon's work and I took the courses and, um, you know, I work with Julia Cannon as often as I can. And just looking at where people have come in the last 25, 30 years of, of me going through my own processes, this, we're definitely on a road to enlightenment. You know, there's conversations that you can have in the general public now that never would have happened 15, 20, 25 years ago. You would have been put in a straitjacket, you know. And, and so we are evolving. We are we're bringing the consciousness up. Um, you know, a lot of the questions are when is when is it going to fully switch to 5D? And I, 
you know, I have my own personal opinions on how that works. You know, I think some people are already there and they're functioning in that fifth dimension, even with the third dimension going on around them. And I think that, you know, each person, again, is on their own journey. The information I got from one of the channels is that it is an individual journey until it reaches a certain vibration and then it becomes a collective journey. And, you know, seeing that in my mind, how that was working, was very enlightening for me to see each person bringing their energy up and bringing it to a certain vibration. And once you reach that vibration, you're letting go of fear. And when you let go of the fear, then you can bring the energies together and create that oneness or that collective and start working more in a mass energy to, and and then it really amps up and the more people we get into that collective state the faster we're going to move into that fifth dimensional vibration and stay there but there's quite a few of you and probably every one of the listeners of this station know how to get to that fifth dimensional vibration unfortunately we do also have to go out into the other part of the world and experience some of that 3d but I'm, I'm willing to bet that everyone listening knows exactly what that going into that fifth dimension feels like and having just passionate conversations and things that they're, um, they're opening their eyes to and getting excited about. And the longer you can stay in that, the longer you can stay in that, the more you're raising that vibration to reach that collective consciousness where you can stay there in a more permanent setting. When you so I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that makes complete sense. When, when you say fear, can you define what you mean? Because people fear different things. So can you define what you mean, fear? Oh, one of those kinds of uh, deeper thought-out questions. Okay. Mm. Um, you know, all of us, we're faced with a 3D reality. We've got bills. We've got children we're raising that, you know... Um, I, I have a good example. Okay, so I had a friend that I was sitting in her living room, and she said, okay, Tracy, there's a, a beam of light right here in the middle of the living room, and if you walk into that, you can step into the fifth dimension, and you never have to come back to the third dimension. That'll show you right there where your fear is. If you thought, okay, I'm just going to get up from my chair, and I'm going to go walk into that light and never look back. Everything that you that's holding you and keeping you from walking into that light, that is got fear attached to it you know i have three kids i was like i can't leave my three kids i can't walk away from this i can't do that and i had a handful of reasons why i couldn't walk into that light and so it helped me to see where my attachments were where my fear was so that would be a good question for people to ask themselves what would keep you from walking through into that light and when you can honestly in the middle of you know, without any preparation, that light shows up and you walk into it. it. You know, now you're in fifth dimension. You don't have to worry about anything else. Don't look back. If you can do that without having any attachment or any fear about what you're leaving behind, then you're, you know, you're in that fifth dimension. But I had to go soul searching for for a couple of weeks after that question going, oh, my gosh, I couldn't walk into that light. And this was holding me back and that was holding me back. So those were all my fears, you know. Um, that's one one way to look at fear. And then another one is, you know, our daily grind, our daily chores. You know, you got your bills. You've got your um, your kids to take care of and feed and whatever. you got your job to go to. You've got all these obligations. You've got this life you built. Just looking at, you know, where is your fear around that stuff? Do you believe you can be taken care of? Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways fear can show up. Mm. You know, the, the fear of the unknown. Um, you know, there's it, it can it can show up in a lot of forms. So hopefully just sharing some of my own experiences is helping people to understand where theirs might be as well. Because sometimes we don't even realize we're afraid of something or that there's fear in the way. You know, people have fear of success fear of you know most people are aware they have a fear to fail but a lot of people aren't aware they have a fear to succeed as well mm. so well sometimes it's just a fear of change though isn't it yeah so change, people, yeah. People, people don't like change because it takes a lot of time change change takes energy and people don't want to use the energy so they like to stay in their comfort zone they want they don't want to push go a step outside the comfort zone because it's only when we step outside the comfort zone we really start learning 
um, and people tend to stay in the comfort zone for because of fear, obviously, and because of the, as Steve said, change. They don't like to change. Um, yeah. well, well, there wouldn't be much holding me back to step into that light. What about you? Um, well, in all honesty, I'll be honest, I mean, for the same as what Tracy said, yeah. um, if someone said to me, there's the blue beam, you walk into that, you're 5D, bang, yeah. all sorted. Well, obviously, my earth plane body will be kind of thinking, well, hang on a second, I've got my family, I've got my wife, I've got my three t- three children. Mm. Um, do I really want to just kind of disappear off the face of the earth? Mm. And and I'll, and I mean, I couldn't do it. Well, that's why I said there's very little. I didn't say oh, I'd do it, but there's very yeah. little. And you have to think of the family. Oh, because, oh God, yeah. I mean, that's all I'd be thinking of. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be thinking of work or, yeah. you know, letting people down by walking, you yeah. know, out my job. So it's just a family thing, really. That's all. That's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if someone said to me, right, your family can go with you. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's then a case like, of now it's a case. Of, okay, fine. My immediate family yeah. can go with me. What about my extended family? No, that's it. Um, you, they have to. They, <laughs> they have their no. Seriously, I know. They, I know, they yeah. have their own responsibility. They have their own essential. And I'm not being bad when I say that, but mm-hmm. you know, and they could be shown the beam as well. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing is, it, you have to look at your immediate family and your wife and kids because yeah. maybe they'll be shown that pillar of five D and they'll. Again, it could be a kind of come. Let's put it this way: there'll be a selection process for people who are on the level to actually walk into it. Yeah. And it could be a lot of your family members could be given that option. You know, some won't, but some will. You know. Then again, yeah. then you have to fear: what if I if I do, do go into the light? Um, someone that I don't like is there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. They, well, look, put it this way: they are on their own spiritual path, yeah. and if they're not ready, they're not ready. Just mm-hmm. you, it's not your your responsibility for their spiritual growth yeah it's their responsibility so and that's where you have to look at it that's where i see it anyway is that fair enough tracy yeah and and i kind of giggle at that what if there's somebody there i wouldn't like because when we're in the fifth dimension when we're vibrating at that at that vibration or frequency we're we're full-on exposed you know it's like being the extreme empath um if if i'm out of sorts and i'm standing there in the fifth dimension talking to you you're knowing i'm out of sorts you're you're not going to have me to say no i'm fine there would be no point in doing that so so if, if there was ever somebody that that wasn't um resonating with you they're going to know it, you're going to know it, and you're going to be able to work that out because you're going to be coming from a space of love in that dimension. You're not going to be coming from that place of fear that somebody's different than you or that their opinion isn't matching your opinion or you're an extreme right. Is that what it was, extreme right? That's right. Well, it's put this way. The fifth dimension is going to be a singularity. It's not going to be duality. So, yeah. you know, there's only going to be love. That's it. End of story. That's it. You know? Exactly. So when do you want to, do you want to, do you have to take a few minutes to tune in to channel? Is <clears throat> um, well, we'll just see if they're ready to come in here okay. and, uh, and I'll just let you know and we'll go from there. Okay. I know this is going to be a bit awkward for the, the listeners because when Tracy does this, she does a video interview with another chap on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and type Tracy's name, you'll see her actually channeling on the video uh, with this chap asking questions as well. And I know we're audio only, so it makes it a bit different. But look, we've never actually <laughs> done a live channel on OIM before. So this is going to be a first anyway. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to go in real quick and explain my process here. So... I have an Octorian that comes in, and I call him Daniel, and he is my gatekeeper. Daniel will access the other channels, and um, he's only allowing in the highest frequency. So sometimes the questions that get asked, the channel I have at the current moment isn't the one to answer it, and they'll go get a different channel. I have a shaman that comes in that will speak the light language. I would like to set an intention for a healing prayer to be said to the audience today. Uh, When we get to that point, if that that ends up being part of our our show today, uh, what I ask the audience to do is to just allow the words to come in. Don't try to overthink it. Um, We are asking for anyone that is open and ready for the activation or the frequency upgrade that they just listen and allow 
for that upgrade to take place. And, of course, we're calling that in in the highest good for everyone. So set that intention for yourself as well. Just like you guys were saying, each of us has a responsibility to do that. So call in your highest and best good. So anything you're listening to today, you're only taking in the parts that are resonating with you and that are in your highest and best good. So that is always my intention when I go into these. Um, Again, the channels will be limited by my reference points. So if there is a question that's out there that that they struggle to find words for, that's not on them, that's on me, and I just put that out there. Um, and, okay, let me go get Daniel, and he'll let you know when he's here. Okay, brilliant stuff. Well, as we say to the listeners, while um, Tracy's gone off to tune in and to bring Daniel in, uh, this is the first time in nearly nine years on OAM that we would have a live channel. So it would be interesting to see. Now, if you have any um, questions, obviously, on the chat room, throw them in there because um, this is a unique opportunity. So um, stick them in the chat room. And not too many folks, but uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can. And if Daniel, uh, when he's ready, if you can let us know if you're there, then that'd be fine. Yes, we are here. Okay. Daniel, mm-hmm. uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Um, we've just been speaking to Tracy about the uh, energies hitting the planet and the solar flare and this ascension to 5D. Can you tell us what your perspective is on this and what's happening at the moment on the planet? Mm, we we are enjoying the solar flare conversation because what we are seeing with the solar flare is it is very much affecting the crown chakra in many. And it is it is a cellular adjustment for everyone as they're going through the solar flare. Mm, these new codes, these downloads, everyone is affected by them. And the crown chakras are being opened at this point as we are preparing Um, everyone is being prepared for much bigger energy to come, much bigger energy to come. If you have followed us at all on the YouTube videos, we we share with you that in August there will be a much mm, stronger wave of energy coming in. And so if you thought that this one was mm, intense, we ask and invite you all to please acclimate to this energy, invite it to... mm, Come into your being and bring in the frequency upgrades that you are ready for at this time because it will make the stronger waves much easier to adjust to. And uh, one of the things we would like to say about that is this this series of energy, the frequencies, the solar flares, there are so many upgrades coming in at this time and so many that are available to you right now in this moment for each of you listening please just open your minds and say to your let's call in your guardian your keepers and let's just say to them bring in what i am ready for bring in the frequencies i am ready for bring in the upgrades the codes whatever it is this one that we speak through likes to compare it to a computer you update your computer system you up you update your phones you update you so we invite you to do that we invite you to update yourselves and bring in these new codes and we 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 are excited for so many to be listening and and being ready for this because the frequencies that come in can come in in a much wonderful blissful way but if you are not doing your work or you are putting up walls of resistance Believe us, you will continue to be pushed until those walls of resistance break down. And you will not like how hard they start pushing if if you are not willing to hmm, step into moving that energy, the old energy, out. And Daniel, how do we download um, these upgrades to ourselves? Mm -hmm. Well, what you want to do is you want to sit quietly and you just ask for these upgrades to come in. Um, A lot of times we... We ask people to do this in the evenings when they lay down for, for sleep and ask for the upgrades to come in while they are in their sleep pattern. But if you want to be more familiar with how that feels, you can ask for that in this very moment. And you may feel something tingly at the crown or some pressure. Hmm, this one that we speak through always feels the pressure on the top of the head or in the third eye. And when the pressure, it's just a very light pressure but this is how she knows this is her body signal that the download is coming in and then when that that light pressure mm, subsides then she is able to be aware that this is now complete and 
she is able to move forward. There are often times when the downloads come in where she will find it very hard to form a sentence because this energy is coming in very strong and it is taking all of her mm, energy to bring it into the conscious and the physical uh, body. So there are many ways that a download can come in, but you will most likely feel this as a pressure in the top or mm, top back of the head or in the third eye. Okay. And when these downloads, if they do come in, what, um, what does it do for us? What, what do these downloads give us? Hmm. The downloads are helping the physical body, the cellular structure of the body, to acclimate to the new frequencies coming in to, just like we were talking about these solar flares, or even when the moon cycles, there's different pressures on the body. And you will notice that, as you were saying, all, all the women were a little bit edgy. And these women were feeling that pressure of acclimating to this energy that was coming in and all of this frequency that was hitting them. If you invite the downloads to come in, if you're not in resistance, it doesn't have to feel so intense. And so when when asking for these downloads, you will find yourself bringing in new information, bringing in new awareness. There are many who have been activated uh, and now speak the light language by bringing in their their upgraded version or download or codes, whichever version of this you like to use for yourself. Uh, there are many who have now noticed that they are more intuitive or more um, trusting of their intuition. They find themselves elevating the information that they are retrieving. It is easier for them to sustain that higher vibration and allow for the not-so-fun stuff to roll right off the back. So there are lots and lots of reasons for these different um, downloads to come in in it again, would be different for each individual. The uh, light language, the codes that come in through these downloads are helping to remind each and every one of you who you are and step you back into the energy of who you are in that higher self, who you are in that soul self version of you, and reacquaint you with that, reminding you you are a spiritual being. You are much more than the physical body that you are residing in at this time. And this is what these upgrades are for. It's to bring us more deeply into that spiritual connection. Okay. And with these upgrades, does this allow us to self-heal and to manifest Mm -hmm. That is such a good question. <clears throat> this is what we are all being prepared for. This is what the collective of the humans are being prepared for. This strong wave that is coming in August will be a wave that is helping to bring in self-healing. And it is going to be a big upgrade for raising the vibration out of the mm, codes or out of the mm, ideas of illness and those will no longer be able to reside within that vibration and there there will be self-healing happening in this next latter half of the year you will see more people surfacing that have healed themselves through maybe major illnesses even and definitely people who are staying healthier and no longer taking on the common cold or illnesses that might have been less in um, severity, but now they are finding they don't have them at all. Allergies gone, these kind of things, things, uh, aches and pains that show up, arthritis, different things in the body that show up for people are now going to be mm, no longer something they are dealing with, and it'll be a very fascinating time. And we are looking forward to this happening as it will start to give more and more of the population something to work for okay or towards mm -hmm. very good the on the planet at the moment we are seeing an awful lot of um negative negative ne negative stuff and people who are um, maybe not handling the frequencies very well and does there seems to be a divide we hear enough about we hear an awful lot about the 3d and the 5d and uh, the separation of that happening now at the moment where the people who are ready can actually do the upgrades and obviously move on 
and ascend or change frequency and then there's obviously the 3D and the, the world is kind of in, in a big disarray at the moment. Can you tell us what's going on? Mm. Let's look at this. We're going to bring ourselves into a higher perspective because we almost see it as a definite divide. And as we experience the duality in this reality, we invite you to look at how the good stuff gets really good and the bad stuff gets really bad. And the pendulum swings really strong one way and then it swings really strong the other way. And there is almost no in-between anymore. And people are going to get to their extremes. And, and the ones that are choosing to do their spiritual work and move towards that higher vibration are experiencing a more blissful life, this is for sure, and they do not like to look through that window and watch the the opposite happening over on the other side of the river, so to speak. We see this as mm, not it is not a good or bad thing. What we are seeing with the ones who are falling into maybe the resistance is what we want to look at or it is, this is a very delicate one for us to answer because there is so many answers that can come out for this particular question with, with the bad things, so to speak, that are happening or the negative things that are being experienced at this time. There are many of the volunteers who have, have mm, elected to be in this side of the fence at this time to help expose more of the things that need to be balanced and cleared up the things that need to be uh, put into the right perspective and right place. There, there is much to be cleaned up on this planet. And so even when you see somebody that you think, oh my gosh, I thought they were spiritual and they're over here doing these things. Well, they are there because this is part of the path they have chosen to bring in the enlightenment to this area that is feeling so much darkness, feeling the heaviness, feeling the, mm, the greed and the lower vibrational energies and the, the struggles or, or the, uh, the heaviness of the planet. So many of those, we ask you just to not go into judgment around it. It is all in perfect alignment because our goal here is to bring everyone into ascension. And some people have to completely fall to get them out of their, mm, what is the word we want here, to get them out of their fog, to get them out of their illusion and bring them into their feelings, bring them into their connection with spirit and remind them who they are. So we ask that you send love and light to this area. Send good intentions. When you see somebody that is acting in a not-so-friendly way or being very aggressive, we ask you, first protect yourself and ask your guardians to be around you and then expand your light out to those that you are around that are in this negative place that have not broken through to their own mm, enlightenment because you carry those codes within your frequencies and when you expand them out and offer them to those around you, you can lift their vibration and you can help them to hmm, maybe find their on switch and get them started on their ascension as well. So there is so much more to that question that is so convoluted, as they say, um, that this, this conversation could go on and on. But what we ask from each of you is to come from the heart. Be a good person. When you see someone in pain, when you see someone acting in fear, when you see someone acting in hurt and anger, Push your beautiful, loving energy out just a little bit further. and Maybe they can get a little taste of that. Do something to bring them back up and help those around you. Would you kind of agree that it's, I mean, yes, I agree that we can, we can do that. But in essence, to keep our own energy up, the best thing to do is to stay with people that resonate on the same frequency as yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, that is what this one likes to do for sure. And it is, mm, she, she has spoken to you earlier, she does not like to turn on the TV or, um, you know, listen to the news, so to speak, as she does not want to be pulled into that other vibration. As you become higher in vibration, the sensitivity levels 
are also enhanced and it is it can be very detrimental to pull in other people's hurts and pains but do remember we are all still collected or connected in that collective consciousness so if you would like to help and you want to stay in your in your nice little area of safety which we totally and completely understand this this net of safety bring that energy up into the collective and share it in the safest way possible you have your guardians you have your um, your angels your guides your your um, councils your your extraterrestrial councils that are there to help you ask for them to keep you in a safety bubble so that the energy cannot come back and affect you so that others who are seeing you evolve and feeling their jealousies around that are not affecting you with their jealousy as well we want you to be safe we we want everyone to be safe and energy is a very tricky thing if you start blending the energies you can pick up on other people's energy that is why we say surround yourself with your protection first with your counsels with your angels before doing any work for others and then there are many ways and ask your counsel what is the best way for me to affect the collective and help bring light into this world and listen to that advice this is just one way there are billions of ways to help the collective mm. to help the planet exactly and uh, what we're doing i suppose is one way of many ways is to try and educate mm. and wake people up and um, which is what a lot of people are trying to do daniel what we're going to do is we have questions here from our listeners and we'll try and keep the uh, higher energy questions uh, as much as we can because we know that's important. So, Steve, if you have the questions there you want to ask, Daniel? Uh, yeah, Daniel, we do have a, a lot of questions coming in, and they're from all, all kind of some questions are, are very, you know, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say negative questions, but they're kind of dealing with negative stuff, and some are kind of dealing with, with um, problems that we're going to face as 5G is rolled out across the planet and Joan is just wondering in relation to our pineal gland uh, she's wondering if our pineal gland is damaged through 5G can our downloads be affected or can we is there a way around this 5G is it going to be detrimental to us as human beings hmm what was the name of this person uh, Joan Joan and Joan, we are going to actually just look at your pineal gland here for just one moment. Mm. Joan, you are an anchor for the white light. This is something that you have done your entire life. You bring that white light in through the crown, you bring it through in through the spine, and you anchor it into the earth. You are a mass channel, is how we want to say it to you, hun. You are a mass channel for this beautiful white light, and you anchor that into the earth. And we say to you that you do not have to worry about this 5G. This is, you are protected. You are protected by this energy and frequency you bring in. Mm. As we, as we look at this, a lot of times the question that will come up is, what do I do with that? What, has I, what do I do as this mass channel of the white light? You are here to anchor that into the earth and into the planet. And um, if you choose to do anything further with that, that is, that is full on up to you. If you would like to use it to raise the vibration of the people around you, you have that ability to do that. Your main... Mm, what we see as your main objective here is to bring that light into the planet itself and br you bring it all the way to the core of the planet and it is just helping to sustain the planet through the polar shift and through mm, much of the energy that is being the planet absorbs a lot of energy it absorbs a lot of the human consciousness as well and so this is this white light that is being brought in is to help keep the balance with the planet now the 5G energy will affect some. It will affect some people. Being aware that this is a frequency that is out there, there are many different ways to mm, deflect this energy, but we're going to tell you your main way to deflect the energy is through intention. You have so much power through your intention. I know there are a lot of people out there that will sell you a tool or sell you a certain device that will help you. And we say those devices work. This is all working. And this is something that brings you comfort. 
put it in your home, put it around your neck, put it wherever you feel guided to put it. And each of you will get your own guidance on this. You will get your own guidance on this. It is time to start listening and bringing in your own information. Each one of you has this access to do that. And we say to you, call it in and ask. Ask what your highest version of protecting yourself in this frequency is. But we do also say, set the intention that this is not something that will affect you. And you may be guided to move. You may be guided to put something in your home to deflect the energy. You may be guided to wear something. There are many different ways, but there are ways to protect yourself. And do know that there are those among you that are also here in the physical realm of the planet that have been placed here to help bring all of this to an end, these frequencies that are messing with your enlightenment. And they have been going on for years. This is, this is just the human race becoming more aware of it. And yet these frequencies have been happening. They have been happening all around you for a very long time. It is now just becoming more public. Okay. And, mm-hmm. Sorry, Daniel. Go ahead. We're just, again, we're going to reiterate that you have the power to say no. Say no. Okay. You no. cannot affect me with that. No consent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no mm-hmm. consent. Okay. What I was going to say, Daniel, uh, very quickly before I go pass over to Steve, is that do you think that if once we work on our upgrades on our, uh, our body and our frequency, that 5G just becomes irrelevant because it just won't have an effect because we are resonating on a higher frequency? Oh, yes, of course. You will, your frequency will be much, much more advanced than the frequency of the 5G. So you will, yes, you will have that going for you and you will have the ability to know how to deflect the 5G as well. Brilliant. Okay, mm-hmm. Steve. Mm-hmm. Okay, we will continue on with the questions. Um, Peter is wondering, Daniel, Peter's in Australia, and he's wondering who or what is behind the powerful energy of Shungite? Or are you, uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll add on to this, I just wonder, are you aware of the Shungite and w- why is it so powerful? Hmm. The one we speak through is not as familiar with the Shungite, so we will be limited with this. Sorry, Peter, but hello in Australia. We will see what we can find for you on that. We sense that the energy or the power of the Shungite is coming from the inner earth realms, and it is a very powerful energy that is coming up from possibly the civilizations within that are setting intentions from the inner earth and moving that energy up. We feel this energy is coming up, up from the inner earth. And so as we're looking at that energy, hmm, this is definitely being assisted by otherworldly vibrations. So as we are not we are not familiar through this vehicle we speak through of the Shungite, we we are limited on what we can tell you, but we do feel like this is an energy that is um, out of this world enhanced and bringing in also from the Earth Mother and the interplanetary beings. This energy, this force, is coming in through the Shungite and being illuminated in in that way. So. We hope that that answer will help you and would help you to work with it, Peter. It is, um, the, and we, we feel there is no mistake in your location, that you are placed there for a reason and that you are aware of that reason. So we won't have to go into that with you, but we want to thank you for the work you do. Brilliant stuff. Okay, you have another question there, Steve? Uh, this is another another question from Peter, and Peter is wondering, um, would you know, Daniel, anything about the true cause of the Tung, Tungusta event over Russia in 1906? Mm, I, this one has no reference of that. Can you enlighten us on what this is? We'll have to ask Peter to, to enlighten us. I'm, I'm not aware. I don't know anything about this, so... Okay, mm-hmm. go to the next question. Okay. Okay. 
Um, Dougie is wondering, Daniel, what does Daniel know about the book of Rai, R-A-I? Ra. Ra. The book of Ra. Mm-hmm. Mm. The book of Ra holds a lot of information that will be um, exponential for the human race. If you are drawn to the book of Ra, this is for a purpose. Please do read this and take it in and absorb this information. It is codes. It is... There are some who will not understand it. And that is not to say that if you are drawn to it and you do not understand the book of Ra, it is not to say that you are not meant to be reading it. You are just needing to read it and mm, bring this information in and then do it again and possibly again. There is a lot to take in. There is a lot of information. Mm, There is a lot of hidden clues in this book as well. And so it there is a certain group of of beings on the planet at this time that will be drawn to this book of Ra and that there are messages there for you and they are very accurate and to trust what you feel and use your inner compass to guide you through that book. Okay. Daniel, Mm -hmm. we are not very familiar with light language. Can you tell us what that is? Mm -hmm. The light language that comes through this one and it will be different. Again, we, we do ask you to please make sure that you are taking everything in with discernment and take everything. We, we ask you to expand it, find other channels, and see how they bring it in as well and find the thing that rings true to you because this will be different for each and every person listening. There are different groups coming through. The channel that comes through this one that speaks the light language, she calls it the shaman, but it is very Octorian in nature. And some of you may be connected to different groups like the Palladians or the Orion Council of Light and whatever other groups. There are so many groups out there. So we do ask for you to find the language that resonates with you when listening. The light language is is filled with frequencies and codes that will bring in knowledge, will bring in healing, will bring in um, information that you are getting on a higher level. Your high self will understand the language and will be able to integrate the language without the conscious self knowing what what it is hearing or understanding. Uh, There are often times that this this one that we speak through will translate if she is given the information to do so. She will translate what the light language is doing or saying at the time. So this is something that took her a while to integrate and through her own codes and upgrades and inviting these frequencies in, she has been able to open herself up more and more to where now she understands some of the language that comes through and she is able to translate it. So That is why we say when you hear light language or you see light language written out, it is more about just absorbing the information, absorbing the sound, the visual. The uh, pixels of the eyes will take in the visual of the light language and integrate it for you. They are, like we said earlier, it is like a, a computer getting a new code. You don't have to understand that new code to know it worked. Okay. Has the, a lot of people are experiencing a ringing in the ear. It could be your left ear, it could be your right ear. Has that anything got to do with the downloads or anything got to do with light language? Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Um, oftentimes the frequencies will create a pitch, and that pitch is there because you have asked for it. That pitch is there because you wanted, you wanted some physical evidence that something is shifting or changing for you, and so they're creating the pitch for you so that you have that physical evidence that it is there. And we offer this idea to you to just pause when you feel that high pitch ringing in the ear, to just pause. There's there's multiple things you can do with this. You can ask them to turn it down if, if you if you no longer want the physical um, element of the download. But the other thing we ask you to do is to think about what were you thinking about just before that happened. What were you thinking about just before that pitch came in? There may have been a very significant idea or thought that had come in. Or maybe you were going down a path of, Mm, self-destruction and they were interrupting you because they want you to change your thought. So it is very important to look at what was happening just the moment before that pitch came in to see if it is something that will you can use in an enlightened creative way 
or if it is something that you need to be aware of that's going on in the back of your mind that is detrimental to you. So this is definitely here to serve you to bring that pitch into your into your awareness. Okay. And also something that a lot of people are experiencing, Daniel, is um, they're looking, for some reason, when they look at the, the, the clock or numbers, they might get 11-11 uh, or 444 or 333, and it, they're not looking to f- look at the number. It's just, it seems to be a coincidence that they will come across this time or number, and it gets very frequent. I mean, people are getting them multiple times a day. Is there a reason why that's happening? Mm, very much so. It is one of the first stages of, mm, no, we don't want to say it that way. It is not a first stage, but this is one of the things that people in the first stages are going to notice maybe the most from anything is, why do I keep seeing this number? Why, and it opens a door. It's a, it's a portal, so to speak. It opens them up to, to hearing, why are they seeing that number? These are codes of awakening. These are codes. This is one way for spirit, for for the angelic teams, for all of these beings that are here with us on this planet at this time to push this awakening cycle through. It is one of the ways for them to reach you. And not only are you seeing the codes as a reminder of who you are, an awakening switch within your subconscious mind, this is something you had set up for yourself in your path. This is something that you said, when I start seeing these codes, I'm going to start waking up. And you start seeing the numbers, and you start seeing what these numbers mean. There are websites you can go to to look up numbers and get messages, and we invite you to do that because it is very fun to get your messages that go with these numbers. But know that the numbers, even if you do not go to the websites to look them up, just know that the numbers in themselves are activating you. They are reminding you who you are. They are making you pause and say, why is that happening? This is, this is so unusual. And it's getting you to think out of the box and getting you out of your coma, so to speak, of daily life. And so we, we really would like for all of those who are experiencing the number frequencies to dig into that a little bit deeper for yourself and maybe even write down for your own self What does this number mean? What is this number going to be a message of? And allow spirit to start showing you your messages. I've had people, this this vehicle has had people do that, where they can write their own messages. That's number 543 means this to me. And then if I start seeing that number, that means that's my message from spirit. That's my message from a loved one. This is what we invite you to do. You can create codes with these numbers outside of the codes that are already being activated within you. These are a way for communicating with those that you cannot quite hear just yet. If your frequencies are not there yet where you can hear these loved ones or you can hear your angels or you can hear your guides, give them give them ways to communicate with you. And like we said, there's already many, there's books and there's websites out there with these codes already written out. So you can find those as well. Okay, that's very interesting because we both see that, don't we, Steve? We see yeah. these numbers and we're seeing them on a regular basis. I suppose it's making us self-aware. By us seeing these numbers, it gets people thinking and making themselves self-aware. And mm-hmm. um, There is a belief, Daniel, that some people, some people believe on the Internet. You hear people talking about this. They believe that there's going to be what we call disclosure and there's going to be sometime down the line a mass landing or mass appearance <coughs> of our, uh, our space beings, our space brothers and sisters. And, you know, I, I'm kind of, myself and Steve are kind of, uh, kind of, we think it's more fantasy than fact. What's your thoughts on that? Hmm. We would like everyone to just trust their own intuition on this one. There is many out there that want to fool you, that want to mislead you. The benevolent beings that are surrounding you at this time, and there are many, there are many in this galaxy that want to see the success of these, this planet, of this ascension process. Many of them travel in their light bodies. Many of them travel in energetic vehicles. They are not, as you speak, a physical 
Mm. We want to be careful because there are some out there that are in physical ships, but not everyone that comes in. We are not in a physical ship when we communicate with this one. We are using our energy to connect. And many of you will feel connection much like this. And if that is what you mean by by extraterrestrials coming into this physical realm, then yes, we are, and we are already doing it. But if you are asking if there will be physical ships landing on this, this planet, then we ask you to use discernment because many of the more advanced civilizations, so to speak, do not have a physical ship that they are... There, there is not the, as you might think, Star Trek or Star Wars version of ships. It is... It is not that they are not out there, but we have no reason to come into your planet when we can help in this way. And one thing we want to to maybe share with you is that as we are a collective consciousness from where we come from, we have to be very careful about bringing our consciousness into a duality world. And so to see a physical ship it is going to be a very tricky thing for you to discern from. There will be some that want to bring their their ships in to be seen because it is part of the awakening process and it is part of the disclosure, as you said. At, but if they are landing, mm, we're not so sure. Be using Use your inner compass. If it feels wrong, it's wrong. Yes. Walk away. We, we've, mm-hmm. act, we've actually been told this, Daniel, that should uh, any ship land and uh, say you should get on board, you should be running in the opposite direction. Yes, we will concur. <laughs> <laughs> because um, the people who are on the, uh, who have the right energy and are coming from the right place won't need ships to do it. No. Yes. And it's not to say you will not see a ship that... They can materialize a ship for you to see with the physical eye, and they are above you all the time. Mm. They are, there are ships above you all the time. They are very well cloaked, and some are high enough up that you would not see them. You are actually being surrounded right now with a layer of protection to help the Earth stay in its access at this time as well. There is a lot of things going on for your planet that are happening all around you that you may not be aware are going on. But the ships that are willing to land in the planet at this time are not in compliance with the order. And we would like to say, please, like you said, do not run to those ships, run from them. Okay. We we have been told that since 2016 that there has been a now a peace treaty has been put in place and that the earth is now under a peace treaty and any beings either on the earth or outside the earth that go against this peace treaty will be uh, dealt with. Um, mm-hmm. Is this true? Yes, this is, this is something that we... Yes, this is true. This is true. There is always going to be those who want to... Mm, not to follow the rules, so to speak, and they are being dealt with. Mm. Yes, and there is a peace treaty. There is um, a council, a council of beings from your own planet that have been part of this peace treaty. And they have been a part of many, many galactic meetups, as we might say, and part of creating the peace among this planet and the rules that must be followed that is that we are seeing that as being very accurate yes okay because we have been in touch with and well people know Thomas Williams Uh, Thomas is going to be in the show next week and Thomas is um, part of the group called the foundation and one of the individuals Kim um, who has taken over from an individual called Marduk have you ever heard of Marduk Mm, no. Okay, that's okay. Um, she is in contact with the council, and we have been informed through them that the peace treaty was activated in 2016, and that now that the Galactic Federation, if you want to call them that, other councils, are now enforcing the peace treaty on the planet. 
um, which is good news, which is very good news. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, we have a question here from one of our listeners, Dougie, and he wants to know, um, do you use light language to change the coding in the air? Yes. Hmm. Are you guys ready for some light language? Would you like to have, hmm, what kind of intention would we like to set for the light language? What would you like today? And we will bring in, we'll bring the shaman in to bring us through that. Yeah, I am, I don't really know what's, what's on the list. What can we ask for? Hmm. We are seeing that there's a lot of people out there that could use the healing of the heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Mm, Okay. So we would like everyone to just focus their energy right now on their heart, and they may even place their hands on their heart because the hands are a very mm, high energy and high vibrational uh, source of energy for you. So if you would like to place your hands on your heart, we will call in the shaman to bring in a vibrational attunement for the heart. Mm, Ti, tatana mahoi ke. Okay, so what the shaman is asking is for everyone to let their guard down if they are wanting to receive this healing. There are some that um, we are seeing, um, how do we want to say this, they're they're not allowing for the energy to flow through the body, and that is, we're going to start this a different way. We want everybody to just start visualizing a beautiful ribbon of light going through their body. This ribbon of light is going to be uh, violet in color, and just start feeling that violet color move through the crown of their head, down through their body, and into the feet, and down into the earth. And again, only those that are feeling comfortable with this, please. We are not trying to enforce anything on anyone this is all free will this is all for your highest and best good as that is the intention and bring that by that light through to transmute any energy that is getting in the way of blocking the healing of the heart Mm, anyone that is in a place of resistance towards mm, what do we want to say here relationships that have been painful and in resistance to releasing those relationships and forgiving them we invite you to just allow for the frequency to carry that heart and to guide it perfectly into where it needs to be in that level of forgiveness and it will only take you as far as you are willing or able to go at this time so just breathe in knowing that you are allowing for something beautiful to happen here with your heart and with your mind and we are going to connect the mind with the heart we're connecting the mind with the heart so that the thought forms that come in are supporting the heart and the desire And as we do that now, we would like to bring in a nice soft pink energy. Move that pink energy through the body, through the auric field. We're going to expand the purple and the pink out into the auric field. And we are going to ask the purple and the pink to to just transmute all of the fragments of pain, all of the fragments of hurt and suffering, being unheard, being unseen, being unimportant, having no voice. Just move that energy out and take a nice deep breath. And now, hands back on the heart if you have moved them off. Ki soto no bahi ka niata, moko la la tinele se ki oto. Kono soko niati apo, sinki ka niati ki andata. Ni soto da mahi ka yanarkia sa niato. The first thing that the channel is asking is that spirit help to remove all the past life fragmentations off of the heart. All of the past lives that are that are being mirrored in in the form of pain to the heart right now is being healed and removed and put into the light. Now we want you to connect with your higher self, with that over soul, with that all knowing and loving part of you, and just bring a direct line into your heart. And bring that direct line right into the center of the heart. And just allow the knowing that you are pure love. You are pure love. 
and all the cracks of your heart can be filled in with this pure love right now. Kikan nyo soto yampu, kikan naraki, larsa mayoto, yinda kaya na sa kaya na nungo, ya papapoy se, lahyo ko nyo tane kiyang yaka. And just wrap your heart into this beautiful layer of, of pure love from the higher self, from the God self, from the source. And know that you are always loved and always protected. And then we want you to just know that all of those out there who have caused you pain, who have caused you hurt and aches, and have made you feel betrayed or burdened or unloved in any way, that they are only coming from their own pain. And so we offer and extend this healing heart to them as well. We are not asking you to offer your heart back to them, but offering them this frequency that you have just received so that their hearts may heal as well. As this frequency is out into the collective, they can tap into it and they can receive their own healed heart in the same fashion. And we are expanding that healing through all the chakras. So in your mind, just bring yourself from your crown to the third eye. Work your way down, all the way down to the root. And just see your chakras being loved and healed. Loved and healed. And move the energy that is not of love out of the chakras. See them going into that violet ribbon that we brought in earlier to be transmuted and turned into love and light. And see the wounds being healed, all the wounds being healed. Your power is restored, your support is restored, your heart is restored, your voice, your mind, all of it being restored to the highest and best. And we bring that in for you with great love. Okay. And that would be some light language for you. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Um, mm -hmm. We'll, uh, you know... I'm not too sure what to say about that. That's brilliant that we can actually do that live. We do have a question from one of our listeners who uh, wants to know. Well, Steve, do you want to read it out there? Um, Peter. Peter's question. Sorry, I'm very. I'm just feeling very relaxed here at the moment. <laughs> I was actually. Mm -hmm. I could feel myself drifting away, um, which is obviously good. Peter is wondering. Question: People who download and listen to shows later, do they get the same healing as those listening to the live broadcast? Mm. Yes, we do invite that to be the intention, that those who are listening to this um, in the recording, remember, we set the intention to put this energy into the collective. So just tap into that direct line of energy in the collective when you're listening to this in the recording. And don't worry, that information has already made it to the subconscious mind. So even though we are well into the show, the vibrations and frequencies that have been coming through this show have already set the intention that they are coming in through the direct line of the, of the collective consciousness. So this is not even something you need to worry about. It is already happening for you. Brilliant. Okay, mm -hmm. we have two more questions, and then we have to, and we let you go, Daniel, after these two questions, because we know we want to bring Tracy back and have a talk mm -hmm. with Tracy. And um, we appreciate you coming through, Tracy, as a channel. And um, do we again a question from Dougie who just wants to know: Do you know the name of each cha uh, chakra in light language? Hmm. That is a good question. That that would be one again for the shaman to bring back in in the light language. Hmm. We are going to set the intention to do that with with Tracy at another time. She will make a video for her YouTube. She already has a chakra clearing channel light language video. We will set one to bring forward the light language. Uh, name for each chakra because that can probably will take her a while to acclimate to that channel to bring that information in. So look for that. We will set the intention to do that with her. Brilliant. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, we we had the question on the chat room, and it's something that I'm a, I'm aware um, and I we spoke to Tracy about this about certain questions could have a negative connotation. And we we didn't want to go down that road, but it is a question that people ask all the time. So we'll try and make it in a way 
that, uh, let's just say channeling in itself, we know that there are, does the, the good channeling um, and mm-hmm. people can come through and we also know that there's, let's say, negative forces that have technology to provide the same facility as if the person is channeling when they're not really channeling, but it's a voice to skull technology. What would, how do, if people want to go and speak to somebody like Tracy or go to somebody who does channeling, what, your, what would your advice be to look for and to watch out for? Mm. One of the things that we like to do, and this is one of her rules, is we have to come from love. Our answers will come from love. If you are getting a fear-based answer, walk away. Yeah. Walk away. Agree. Mm. Anything that comes from fear is not from love. And if you are getting a fear-based answer, then your channel is not a channel of source or benevolence. And we would ask you to trust your inner gut. If you get any bad feeling at all, you are your own best compass. You are a beacon of light. And when you feel the darkness, the shadow of another come in, you know, you know you feel it. And so we ask you to trust that. We know that sometimes you can get really into a loop of really wanting an answer. And we do understand that. And we say there are no mistakes. If you bring in an answer that is bringing in the fear, then there is something there for you to deal with in your own shadow. And it will lead you down that path to do that. So we do tell you that things do not happen by mistake. If that is going to be part of your lesson, it will happen for you. But we do ask that. For your own discernment, if it is not coming from a place of love, then this may not be the source that you want your information from. True. And uh, can I also add to this that if anybody goes to a spiritual medium and they do the same thing and give you negative information, then they're not doing it in the right way. Okay? Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be giving you negative information. There's ways and means to give you information, but not in a negative way. So just to keep that in mind. Right, we've just got, we are going to sneak one more question in, Daniel. <laughs> sorry about this. We'll sneak one more in, and then we'll go back to Tracy. Uh, Steve? Yes, uh, this uh, final question is from Peter. Again, Peter is in Australia, and his question, uh, Daniel, who are the beings known as the Bigfoot? They can translocate mm. and have special powers they have been on Earth much longer than mankind. Yes, the Bigfoot, as you call them, are very high vibrational beings. And they are here on the planet with you at this time. Many, many of them are here. And they are here to help. Um, they are helping the Earth. They are here helping the Earth itself. And when the human reaches a certain vibration or frequency, there are certain places you can go on this planet, certain areas where their sightings have been made, but with the right intention and with the right vibration, they will let you see them. So if you are working on your own vibration and bringing that up, they will let you see them. They are... Hmm, they are very high vibrational beings, and that is why it is... Something that is not visible to the eye of of the the human, and they are able to move their frequencies just like he has said. This is Peter, correct? They yeah. are able yeah. to move their frequencies. And in fact, Peter, you I believe you have communication with at least two of them that you speak with frequently. So this would make sense that you are asking this question. I see two of them with you. Uh, this is. These are beings that will work with you, much like I am working with Tracy, and they will connect with you. Um, they, hmm. hold on, just one moment. There's there is a pause in this, and we are not sure why there is an interruption. So, hmm. okay. We are being stopped. We do not know why. There is no more information that we can bring forward. And we we are not sure what the cause of that is unless there was something we were about to say that they do not want that information out. And so we are being asked to stop. Uh, Hmm. Have they asked you to stop? That is is the impression that we have right now is, yes, we have been asked to stop. 
to stop that transmission. That is a first for us. We, we are not sure why that happened, but we will honor it. This is, uh, Peter does have the information. He was just looking for confirmation, and we want to say, yes, Peter, your information is correct. We can give you that. Okay, mm-hmm. so are, are you controlled by a higher power or a higher energy or entity? Mm, we are all part of source. So if that is what you were asking, yes, mm-hmm. we are all connected as part of source. Um, what we are honoring is, and let us explain how this came through just now. We were talking and there was an energy on the left side that mm, brought in this feeling of, please don't share that. And so we, that's why we paused. This was, this is not, this is not Octorian and it is, we do believe it is the Bigfoot. It is a female Bigfoot that is coming through that is asking us to not share that. So, mm, all of you will find your own, your own way to raise the vibration. If communication is your desire, you will find your way to do that. Okay, well, it's, it's an L of respect that you respect their wishes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, Daniel, we like to thank you for coming through, Tracy. We know it gets tiring for Tracy as well, and we don't want to take up too much of our energy. And we have um, probably about 10 minutes left, which we will talk to Tracy too. Uh, again, thank you for coming through. Uh, much appreciated. Mm, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, you guys, that was, uh, I don't think I've ever gotten that hot doing a channel before, so I'm over here just sweating. I'm glad this isn't a video. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll keep it clean. <laughs> very, very good, Tracy. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions there um, that we, uh, and obviously, you know, you, it's something that, you could go on online asking questions, and I know being a channel that it can get tiring as well. Um, mm-hmm. So you want to kind of give it some time. Um, but no, it was um, it was interesting the questions. So we definitely will be uh, doing a part two with you on that one because there's so many. Oh, you don't know. You know, sometimes you walk away. Sometimes it's like when you go to a, a medium and you're getting a reading, and it's only when you walk away and you go, "Damn, I should have asked this question. I should have asked that question." So I'm sure there'll be more coming, but. It, they covered the main questions that we wanted to know, the main areas that we were kind of concerned about. Yeah, um, I do have to say that very in peace was very interesting um, to have them come in and and, and interrupt that that communication. <laughs> that was something I've had in readings. I've had the Bigfoot come through. They are such an amazing and loving um, being, and they're very maternal um but th- it was definitely a female um bigfoot or sasquatch that was standing there on my left side mm. and she was asking him to stop so i don't know if if that was putting it in putting too much out there about um interacting with them it might maybe it maybe it interrupts what they're here to do if too many of us are trying to contact them i don't True. know exactly <laughs> But, it, yeah, I mean, it was done very lovingly, but it was kind of funny. It's kind of like I'm hearing this conversation in my head of the Octorian going, what? <laughs> and that, please stop. And and they're, like, trying to understand why they needed to stop that communication. But um, I'm sure that they'll have a talk about it on another level somewhere. Definitely. <laughs> well, you know what was, was in, good. You know what was interesting? We were told about the peace treaty uh, by uh, Thomas from THI and he worked with the, the, the Federation and Kim and basically um, Marduk and I know Daniel obviously wasn't familiar with Mar- Marduk um, it's all got to do with the collateral global accounts and the financial system and the banking system and Marduk is non-human who was actually running the whole show uh, and basically he's now been removed and Kim now is the um, the treasurer or the um, in charge of the financial uh, system globally, um, and it was Kim actually deals with the council, and they wow. said and they said they came the council told Kim that the peace treaty after sixteen thousand five hundred years, as Thomas said, um, the peace treaty was done on August twenty sixteen 
which means that instead of the uh, council enforcing a contract on the people of Earth, it's now reversed and now they're enforcing the peace treaty, which means that any negative entities or um, celestial uh, entities who come in, who try and go against the peace treaty, will be dealt with. Yeah, I, I, when you asked that question, I could fully feel that that was very accurate. Um, my own experience with um, those councils, one, one day I went into a meditation, next thing I know I'm in like this little pod, and there's thousands of these pods, and I'm in there with the Octurians, with the one that channels through me, and then uh, some crystalline um, Octurian beings as well, and... I'm standing there going, where am I? And they point down and there's this platform and there was um, probably what you're talking about going on, like a peace treaty or a a council meeting of some sort going on. Mm. And um, I I will say this, I, I saw Trump in there and I was like, oh, that's very interesting. Okay. But I wasn't able to hear any of it. And Mm. Um, and then I was pulled right back out of it. So I don't know what they were showing me for sure, other than maybe they wanted me to know that Trump Trump has more information than we think he does, maybe. I don't know. Well, no, you, but, you, um, you're, you're right. He, he, well, according to what we've been told, he actually does. He's been giving... He's been given the information, but also he knows what's going on, and that's why he's talking about Space Warden uh, being, you know, a space program and everything else. He's aware of all this stuff now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'd have to agree with that after seeing that because it was, it was not even my intention for that. I was, I was intending to go in and do some healing work for a friend, and boom, I got taken. <laughs> you know, I was just like, bam, I'm in this pod, and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. So, um so, you know, I think that there's there's certain things that are doing with me and, and keeping me in the dark on some of the political stuff. I don't follow any of it mm. um, because that's not what they that's not what they're doing with me. They've got other people they're working with in that arena, which it sounds like you have them as guests on your show. Mm. Um, but it seems to me what they're doing with me is they want to bring in these light codes. They want to bring in the healing. They want to bring in the high vibration information for people to raise that vibration, keep that vibration up, raise the people around you. Um, so I don't know if, if maybe I got a different assignment. I don't know. But uh, it does seem like um, I'm being kept away from anything political. You, you well, could ask me something political mm-hmm. right now, and I will have no clue. Well, that's, that, no, that's, that's fair enough. You, <laughs> yeah. you, you had a question that was very important. Um, it was a question that was asked in the chat room, and I wanted to be diplomatic about it um, and, and, and mention it in the same way because, and it was basically got to do with the channeling because there is a, there are people who are concerned about channeling and mm-hmm. there's on one side we know we have the Tavistock Institute where they do voice to skull technology um, yeah. where they can do that. We've had somebody on the show who has suffered from that and also we know about demonic entities and walk-ins taking over and uh, it was a good point that Daniel made. And if the information you're getting is negative, then it's the wrong kind of energy and it's the wrong kind of information. Yeah. Yeah, that one's really important, I believe. Um, if, if anything's from fear, then, yeah, that's you, you want to walk away and then you want to do sage yourself. No. <laughs> Yeah. But, um, you know, I, in my earlier years of doing this work, I did see an exorcism take place. I know that those energies are out there that that darker energies can, um, you know, cling on to us and, and take over in such ways. And that's why it is important for us to keep our vibrations up. And if you do work with crystals, that is actually part of how that happened was was a crystal meditation thing and the crystals hadn't been cleared the energy on them hadn't been cleared and this person was doing the meditation and the breathing exercise with the crystal and and just this energy took over and um so you know definitely pray over things you guys say your prayers that's a real thing do it and uh, call in your angels and make sure that you are when when you want to connect 
to your spirit guides to, you know, doing something like I'm doing with the Octorians, any of it. Say your prayers around it first. Call in your highest vibrational good. Make sure you're in a, you're not in a bad mood when you're doing that because you're just going to attract that energy to you if you are. And so you, you got to keep that vibration up. And, I mean, that's a beautiful thing to connect with these beings. But, you know, I'm not going to encourage people to play with it if they're not in that mode of keeping their, their vibration up because um, there are other energies out there that would just as likely like to play with you. Exactly. So, and people yeah. have to be careful. Uh, protection is very important spiritually. And uh, we have uh, mentioned that time and time again on the show just to be aware. And, of course, we all have a an aura and a vibration around us and they, they normally say on average it's about eight foot wide so if you imagine if you're going <laughs> shopping and you're you're rubbing past everybody with this eight foot wide aura that's why people mm-hmm. need to bring it down bring it to an inch of your body if you're going out in the public otherwise you're hitting off everybody else's aura and you're picking up their energy and if there's any negative energy it's rubbing off you and it's picking it up and uh, to prove this fact there's a place that we have a shopping centre near us called Navin, and when I go down there, I tend to come out like a bull in a china shop because of all the kind of negative energy that's in that mm. place. I just don't like it, um, yeah. so I try and avoid it. But when I go in, I'm just I'm well aware to you know to be careful. Um, but listen, uh, Tracy, we have reached that time, and it's been a fantastic interview. Um, love the information, brilliant. We'll definitely do a part two if you're up for doing that. Oh, and yeah. um, it was very interesting. And, you know, again, the frequencies we say to people all the time, you know, we need to raise our frequencies. We need to be positive. We need to focus on the positive. Um, and with the 5G and everything rolling out, as Daniel said, as long as you keep your energy up and with these energies coming in and the uploads coming in, we, we're going to have self-healing, especially in August if there's going to be a big burst of energy coming in and manif- manifesting nice things, focusing on them. Thought energy is an energy after all, so put the thought out there. All these things are all very important. We just need to practice them on a regular basis. But a big mm-hmm. thank you for coming on, Tracy. I'm going to pass you over to Steve, and Steve's going to get all your contact details where people can find you. Steve. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Tracy, it's been absolutely fantastic. A lot of lovely, lovely positive comments coming in there on the chat room. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to read out them all. There's loads, of, loads more questions as well. And again, we don't have time, uh, but it's been absolutely fantastic. I think people have uh, definitely had their whistles wetted, uh, so do, hopefully in the future we will be able to do a part two, a follow-up. Uh, we do actually have a link to your website, which is tracymahan.com, which we have actually put up on the chat room, uh, both of the chat rooms there, so people can actually check that out. And we also encourage people to uh, fire your name into YouTube as well so they can see some of the videos. Uh, are, are there any other avenues where people can find out more about your work? Um, I, You know, I play a lot on Facebook and interact with people there. Um, so, again, it's Tracy Mahan. Uh, I do have the CHT following my name on that one for the Certified Hypnotherapist. Um those are the main spots you're going to find me, YouTube, Facebook, and my website. And I usually keep all three of those pretty updated. I am on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Um, but the most information will be on those three sites. So that would be a great place to come, hang out, um, interact with me. Let's play. You know, I, yeah. I do a lot of different things. The uh, the channels has been amazing they the channels have been bringing in the ascension i do now what's called an ascension activation uh hypnosis or or session and that's where i go into the channel and then the channel takes you into a session so it's they've been incredible yesterday the gal i took in said she saw colors she couldn't even describe that's how amazing they are so um you know, if you feel pulled to do something like that, come check out my website and, and read about it and see if that calls to you. But those are the those are the spots to come play with me. Come find come find me and and let's be friends. So, okay, yeah. great stuff. I, do, I, I, I oh, sorry, and um, we want to say thanks to Daniel as well. Um, and I do want to apologise. Uh, this is something that we normally do at the beginning of the show. If we have a guest on and we're not sure of the pronunciation of their their name or their surname, we generally ask. But we thought we had yours, Mahan, because that's how it will be pronounced here. But you just said it's Mahan, so I do want to apologise, <laughs> Tracy Mahan. Okay, sorry, that's me. I I made the assumption it's Mahan. I I I, I read that's it. What, out, yes, that's yeah, what we were saying. I've seen it. 
Mayhem. Okay, we'll we'll keep that in mind. Okay, Tracy, stay with us there. We're just going to go over to a musical break, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People's Internet Radio.com. Okie dokie, and we are back. Yes, TracyMahan.com, not Mahan.com. Uh, so that link is up there on the chat room. And as she said, yes, yeah, she, she's on Facebook and all the other the other social, out, uh, social outlets as well. So if you want to play, just hit her up on, uh, on one of those. Brilliant. Great information. Right, okay. On to a few bits. Right, uh, Steve, you want to go with uh, Richard? Where will I go, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> right, where, we're, we're off. Good on the yes, okay. Richard Cumber's uh, Pain Genie Energy Medicine Course at the Birmingham Buddhist Centre coming up on April and also May. Listeners can look at the website, which is www.21stCenturyEnergyMedicine.com and under the Skinar Training tab for info. There will also be a discount for OAM listeners, and anyone who buys a Pain Genie will get free access to the new tab in the paid members only subscription area, which will cover most types of chronic and degenerative disorders. This is, sorry, not even disorders. So, yeah, check that out. Okay, do you want to do Paul as well? Oh, <laughs> I don't like where you're coming from. Right, I'm going to do Paul. Well, are you doing impersonation, Paul? I don't think Is so. it an impersonation you no, want? No, 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 go Hi, ahead. my name is Paul. Oh, anyway, Paul O'Connor, remote viewer. Uh, Paul just said, I'm writing to let you know that I have organised a four-day CRV remote viewing training in Dublin and in Ireland. The dates are the 8th to the 11th of April 2019. There will be a small class with a minimum of three new students, a maximum six new students, with places available on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, he also sent us over a poster. Uh, the location is the Kilmainham Hilton Hotel in Dublin. The cost of the four-day training for new students is €995. Euro. That's the early board or 1050 for late bookings for new students. Any listener who quotes the special OYM discount code, which is OYMCRV, will receive a 10% discount. Unfortunately, the early board has passed because it was during the week and we just got the... Uh, the email Jordan Week, so it's going to be the 1050 price, unfortunately. But there you go. Um, okay, so on the show next week, we have our last OAM show before we take our sabbatical. And um, so we've asked Thomas to come on and you know give us his thoughts on what's going on and what's happening and everything else. So um, that's uh, who, what's the what the plan is for next week. The um, solar flare, the solar flash that was supposed to happen. On the Friday, well, we did talk about that on the show, and that was quite interesting. And um, that Steve had experienced that in his job with what was going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, we just have to kind of watch out for that. Now, according to Tracy, there's going to be another big energy boost in August, so we're going to have to kind of watch out for that. The ringing mm. in the ear thing, I get that on a regular basis, and it's not tinnitus. And also the numbers. Now, when Tracy started off that light language um, uh, kind of wording, yeah. wording, the time was 2020. <laughs> well, there's a coincidence. <laughs> there you go. And, yeah. and these times and dates are coming up, you know, um, the numbers come up on a regular basis. I, I don't know many times I've woken up during the night and I've seen 444. 2020, 08, 08, 21, 21. All these numbers are all... Now, I don't know, maybe we can go online and find a website and, and look at what yeah. these numbers mean out of interest. But uh, it's interesting that if you do... Do you get ringing in your ears? Yes. So Mostly the left ear. So the next time you get ringing in your ear, you have to think about what you were thinking at the time, whether it was positive or negative. Yeah. That's uh, quite, quite interesting. You know, because now some of the stuff that she said is some of the stuff that I kind of learned when I was in the spiritual circle about your energy and your aura field and bringing it in. And we have the ability to heal. I mean, uh, Thomas has said that time and time again. We keep looking at um, devices on the outside, the external, when we have the power and abilities on the inside to do all that. Um, so we, that's what we need to do. We need to be practicing our own self-healing, our own energy and I'm working on it and developing that. Um, I did put a post up from Facebook this week. 
and the post was it's on the, my personal page and it was just basically that I kind of said I'm done regarding the waking up process because the people who need to be woke up are woke up and the people who aren't woke up maybe they will maybe they won't but it's now time to change and shift gear and focus on the 5D the 5D energy and all that kind of stuff basically what we were talking about on the show tonight um, and, and deal with that um, there are all, all other alternative shows out there who have taken up the gauntlet and are dealing with kind of all the kind of day to day negative issues that are out there that we have dealt with for the last nine years um, I know that we'll still be talking to them even on Steve's show or my show we'll still be talking about the odd thing that's going to be going on I know you're, you, Steve you touch base on your show on a few things like that of what's happening yeah. um, you catch up on the news um, so between Steve's show and my show we're going to be covering quite a lot anyway um, so that's going to be you know that's going to be interesting but that's really uh, the news I was going to say I was, I was going to put a lot more I know I had a lot more on my list to chat about now the other thing is that oh, I did ask Peter on the chat room what we did was you know we were having the problem with our software and the, the laptop and everything else and what would happen was when we played when we let the, the actual guest go the music for some reason would overplay um, before we finished with the guest and Peter confirmed on the chat room thanks Peter that that didn't happen tonight excellent which is a good thing because basically what we did I had a bit of a eureka moment and what I did was from last week's show I remembered that I had an old installation a working installation of the laptop operating system and all the SAM software that we use um, and the only reason why I had a copy of it was we updated the hard drive from a, a HD disk to an SSD disk but I had the old hard drive still there with all the information on it so basically what I did is I just quickly restored the old hard drive with all the software on it and wiped what was on the laptop from last week and hey presto it seems to be behaving itself the music is not doing what it was doing and as Peter said on the pod um, it, it just worked perfectly tonight so I think we've kind of cracked it although we're still trying to work out what the problem was and we think it was down to the Windows 7 installation of software we think it was that um, so if it's not broke don't fix it so whether we update Sam to the latest version I don't know we'll have to see um, because it is working and if it's working then why do we need to upgrade it so we'll see what happens anyway um, but as I say for next week anyway uh, Thomas is on the show and uh, so we'll talk to Thomas about what's going on the, the, we have so much information there's so much stuff happening now in the world honest to God you could fill up a show with just me and Steve talking about everything that's going on um, there's an awful lot of uh, we talked about the energies hitting the planet and people being affected who are not resonating on the right frequency and are just, just there's just mad things going on really 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 mad things going on uh, plus there's weather patterns were happening that's going on as well weather conditions cyclones and stuff like that and um, I don't know are we in a transitional period on the planet is there the, is the divide of 3d and 5d happening a lot of people believe that it is happening um, <coughs> and maybe what we need to do is we need to ride the wave need to go with the flow keep your keep an open mind and just accept the energies as Tracy said or Daniel said do the, take, take the upgrades that are coming in ask for the upgrades to come in in love and light obviously with protection for obvious reasons and and take the upgrades and just focus on the positive and um, that's it really I, I don't know in Ireland here at the moment um, there's a number of new political parties that are set up so you know we'll have to see what happens with that but Steve I, um, I know you have a few things to say so for myself Alan James take it easy have a good week we'll talk to you next week Right, I've got 48 <laughs> seconds. And, and uh, a bit, and a bit. And, and a bit. Uh, okay, we just want to say thanks to everyone who joined us on the chat room this evening, on both of the chat rooms, on OYM and on PIR. I do apologise for uh, some of the questions that, well, a lot, a lot of questions that we did not get to ask. Uh, we do apologise. Hopefully that there was enough in information in the entire interview, in its entirety, uh, to satisfy a lot of people. Um, 
uh, when, when we have Tracy on again, at some point in the future, we can uh, we can uh, ask those questions. Um, yes, uh, what else can we say? Uh, Barry Prince is up next uh, with the big puzzle. Uh, Three Amigos will be on People's Internet Radio tomorrow night. Uh, that's from 9 o'clock onwards for a meandering chat, as they say, and an open-minded discussion. All are welcome. Uh, we'll be back here at the same time next week. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit emotional. There's a lot of comments coming in on the OAM chat room there, and uh, yes, uh, OAM, we're, we're not going, we're not going far. We're just having a little break. And um, we don't know how long the break is going to last. It could last five minutes. Uh, we don't know, but uh, Alan and I are, are, are we're we're kind of just uh, trying separate projects. Also, um, so do you know the week after next, Alan will be will be uh, on his show. Um, circle of white light dot com or circle of white light radio. So I'm looking forward. To it. I'll be listening. I'll be tuned into that. Uh, I'm, if, if if there's a phone in facility or or a, <laughs> <laughs> a on the chat room, in, yeah. I, I might ring in or Skype in. Anyway, there we go. Um, so look, that's it. It's just nine o'clock now, so we'll uh, we'll see you all again next week. So, uh, again, thanks to everyone who joined us on the chat rooms and also on the live stream. And if you listen to the podcast, thank you also. We'll catch you again next week. Until then, from all the team, as I say here at Open Your Mind Studio, uh, take care.